Hello and welcome to Gardening at 58 North. So in this video what I'm going to be doing is propagating my Insetti Ventricrosum banana here. So this type of banana isn't technically a true banana, it's from the Insetti genus instead of the Musa genus and so it doesn't produce offsuits like a normal banana would. An example here of a Musa is a Musa Vazu and you can see here there's a main central plant in the middle and what it does is it sends out lots of suckers from around the roots and you can propagate it pretty much constantly just using these new suckers that come up every year. But with Insetti ventricosum it doesn't produce this so when I come down here you can see it's got one main trunk and this won't naturally produce any suckers for its whole life. At the end of its life cycle once it gets big enough it will flower and then die. So the main way Insetti is propagated is a special form of division or from seed propagation. So the plain green variety is easy to propagate from seed. But the problem with a, a, a cultivated variety like this one, this is Insetti ventricosum morellii, is if you were to grow this from seed, you wouldn't be guaranteed to get those nice dark green leaves again. You might have a, you wouldn't have that nice kind of colouring. You, you don't really know what you're going to get. So to get this to grow true from form, what you need to do is take a, a clonal propagation or basically just a, a bit like a cutting. So that's what I'll be doing today. So what I need to do with this is first of all cut all the leaves off and then dig it out the ground. And then what I need to do is damage the central growing point. There's one central growing point in the middle of this and there'll be a very small corm or tuber at the base. And that one central growing point is where all the leaves come from. If that gets damaged, what the plant does is it goes into shock. It stops producing hormones from that central growing point and that will trigger any dormant cells around the base to start growing and start producing new plants. So basically what I'm going to do with this one is dig it up, cut it in half to damage the central growing point. That will put it into shock and it should encourage it to put up lots of new shoots and, and a bit like suckers like it would with a normal banana plant. So the first thing I'll do is cut all the leaves off. The leaves aren't necessary for the propagation and they'll just get in the way. It'll make it a lot easier to see what I'm doing once the leaves are removed. So as you can see there with the leaves removed it's much so easy to see the stem and it's a much smaller, more manageable plant. So what I'm going to do now is clear around the mulch from the base and start digging up the plant, try and get up a few of the roots if I can as well. So that's the Insetti now dug up. Now there's a lot of stem at the top here, this isn't necessary for the propagation. So what I'm going to do now is get a sharp knife and cut most of that stem off. All we really want is the bottom section here where they'll have a kind of corm or a tuber and that's where all the new growth will grow from. So now I've got it cut basically back to the main comb. What I want to do is completely cut this in half. So using my knife, I'm just going to cut it in half and destroy the central growing point. The central growing point is going to be somewhere underneath that middle section there. So I just want to make sure I cut through right through the middle of that. What that will do is I say it will damage the growing point, encourage any side shoots to start growing. There will be dormant buds inside the tuber, which is actually just underneath this kind of leafy section. It's further down in the soil area. That will just encourage any of these cells to start to differentiate and turn into young new shoots. So that's the stem now cut in half. You can see some of the old leaves at the top here. The main tuber is this white solid section in the middle. So the, the, the main growing point will be somewhere in the middle there. I've gone through that, so that should now be damaged. And it will encourage lots of shooting from around the top. Now with the, the tubers, the best thing to do now is actually to keep a little bit of root. The root will help it just to gather more nutrients and water as it starts to regrow. And it will actually encourage it to, to sprout slightly better. So I'm leaving most of the roots. I'll put these now into new pots. I'll bury this as well, just covering the top of it with soil in a free draining mix. I'll also make sure that the soil is quite rich. A high nitrogen feed at this stage can actually encourage it to form more shoots and more divisions. And the only thing I need to watch out for is rot. There's a chance that this could rot. That's part of the reason I want to take off a lot of these, these leaves from the top. There's less moisture in it. But I'll basically just sit this now in a warm location. And then once I start seeing some new growth starting to appear, 
then I'll make sure it's under some bright lights and allow those new suckers to start to grow and grow large enough that there'll be individual small plants in the future. So it's now a few months later and as you can see we've got some new growth coming through. So with both of these I kept them quite cool, I kept them kind of dormant for a lot of the winter because if they were to start growing as soon as I harvested them the problem would be that I wouldn't have space to keep them growing. So basically I kept them dormant for the whole of December, whole of January, then around February time I gave them a bit of warmth to encourage them back into growth. So this one on the right it appears that this has actually still got a lot of the original growing point or the merry stem in the inseti trunk. So when I split it in half this one was probably a slightly larger half and it had that very central point still existing, but it was just badly damaged. So this one didn't do anything for a while, and then once it had a bit of warmth, it quickly started to shoot up in the middle, quite a strong central shoot. You can see that here. So it's, uh, it looks like this is the original Mary stem. So most of the energy from this has gone into this new shoot. There's a few uh, slightly smaller shoots coming up, but generally it's just one main shoot there. So what I'm going to do, I'm gonna allow this to grow quite a bit larger, and then I'll see, once it's grown a little bit more, if I can tease out any of the smaller shoots. Now what I was hoping for was more like this, although I'm quite happy with this because it means I get a large established plant this summer already. Whereas the divisions from this smaller one here, that will take another year or so until I get a really large plant. But by the end of summer this should be larger than this one is at the moment. So I'll show you these here. This is the one that was split and there's absolutely no merry stem left. So what the plant has done is it's ha it had to send out a new growing point. So because the original one was damaged, what it did is it started to grow this strange kind of warty growth. It's kind of hard to show here but basically the middle was this space in the middle of the original plant so all this on the left has grown that was just clean cut off it just kind of had this strange swelling from the corn that just kept growing and swelling and basically just a mass of cells a bit like stem cells in the humans basically they're just like a mass of undifferentiated cells that don't really know what to do because they don't have any of the, the messaging mechanisms that is normally with the plant because the main growing point has been taken out so they keep growing and eventually they start to differentiate into new growing points and what happens is you get loads of them. So they could, they could be up to 100 here, maybe more. Lots of tiny individual growing points. The first leaves that come out don't look too much like leaves, but they, you can tell they are just starting to become a bit more leaf-like now. And you'll see that in the time lapse as well. As they grow, they become more leaf-like. And this should leave me with probably over 100 little tiny plants if I am actually able to divide them successfully. So with this larger plant, I'm going to now no longer have this under the grow light and have the larger plant just in my natural light in the conservatory. It doesn't need all that extra light anymore. Whereas this one here, this one still needs a bit of extra light to get the plants to grow faster. So this will be under the grow light. And I'm going to divide this up at some point in the future. I might make a video in the future about that. And basically what I'll do is I'll fill up the soil level a bit more, try and get some soil around the growing points so that they can grow their roots into something. Because at the moment, a lot of these growing points are slightly above soil. And then in a few weeks time, or maybe a month or two, when these are a lot larger, I'll try and separate them out. And as long as I can cut them off with a bit of that original corm at the base, and some roots these should survive so that's what I'll be doing with these I'll also be doing the same with the ones at the back there so that I can try and save some of these tiny little plants that are coming up there and that way I should be able to get quite a few I mean I don't really need a lot I only need two because I'd like to have them at two whiskey bowels at the front of the house but if there's any spare I'll, I'll, I'm sure I'll find space for them in the garden really nice leaf color especially when they get a bit more mature or they've had a bit more daylight and they get 
that kind of nice red color appearing on the leaves. These ones haven't got that too much yet because it's the beginning of the year. So that's all for this video. Just wanted to show you the process I've gone through this year in splitting my Inseti Venticosa Morellii to try and propagate it further into more plants. And I'll hopefully have a video update in a few weeks or months when I'll be separating the individual plants from this massive of new growth here and planted them out in the garden or my whiskey barrels.